Rome has a very serious problem in regards to Islam. And I'll tell you why. This is the Universal Catholic Catechism. And again, it can be changed at the whim of the Pope, but it currently reads, The Church's relationship with the Muslims, the plan of salvation, this is a quote from Lumen Gentium, the plan of salvation also includes those who acknowledge the Creator in the first place amongst whom are the Muslims. These profess to hold the faith of Abraham, and now listen, and together with us, they adore the one merciful God, mankind's judge on the last day. That's Lumen Gentium 16. So from Vatican II. But it's in the Universal Catechism. So this again raises the question, what is infallible teaching? Because there are people, they'll, there are people like Tim Staples who will say, well, Vatican II is just a pastoral council. It didn't promulgate anything new. And there are a lot of people who try to... Um, downplay the doctrinal authority of Vatican II. The problem is, if you then take a statement from Vatican II and quote it verbatim in the Universal Catholic Catechism, and the popes have known this, multiple popes have known the content of this, how is that not representative of the official teaching of the Church? Seems to me rather obviously that it is representative of the official teaching of the Church. And so the Church says, now if it just simply said, these profess to hold the faith of Abraham, okay, duh, that's, yeah, they claim to hold the faith of Abraham, with differences, but to, to worship the God of Abraham. And they would say that we have gone into excess and though we all claim to be worshiping the same God, there are fundamental differences as to what we believe. But it's not what all it says. It says, and together with us, and this is Rome speaking for all Christians, together with us, they adore the one merciful God. I don't know how you avoid the reality that what this is saying is that there is true worship of the one God taking place in Islamic worship. Rejecting Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Identifying the worship of Jesus as shirk. Denying that he died on a cross. Denying that he rose again the third day. But worshiping the one true God. Here's the problem with Romanism. All through this, you'll have the idea that all mankind are the children of, of God. No recognition of Jesus' plain teaching. You're your father the devil. You have to be born again by faith in Jesus Christ to be in the family of God. Rome doesn't believe that. Not anymore. Once did. Doesn't anymore. This is part of the change of doctrine and teaching over time. But especially in regards to Islam, we adore the one true God. Together with us, adore the one true God. So, with that as a background, let's listen to this clip from Catholic Answers Live that has caused um, controversy even amongst Roman Catholics. Regarding the teaching of the Catechism about uh, Muslims worshiping the same God, yes. or to put it in the, the language that says, together with us, they adore the one merciful God. Yes. So how does that unify with what Jesus says in John chapter 5, that whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him? Great question. And he here's the key. I always like to go to texts like John 14, 6 to clarify on this point, because Jesus also says in even more plain terms than the verse you just gave, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Right? And so how in the world can anybody be saved other than those who know Jesus? And of course, we believe as Catholics that there, there, there's the possibility of salvation for those who have never rejected Jesus. And why do we say that? Because if you go to the next chapter in, in John 15, verse 22, Jesus says, if I had not spoken to them, 
they would have no sin. Now I have spoken to them, their sin remains. Notice how Jesus there teaches that you're not responsible for what you did not know. And we would add in our Catholic theology what you could not have known, what you were not responsible to have known. And so, yes, it is absolutely true that if you don't honor the Son, you're not honoring the Father. But what's implied there is that you know it. To knowingly reject the Son is to reject the Father. But again, Jesus says, if I had not spoken to them, they would have no sin. In other words, you're not responsible. This is what the church understands as invincible ignorance. That is, the, not just ignorance. And remember, ignorance is never bliss. Ignorance is a bummer, and it's dangerous. It's invincible ignorance that can mitigate culpability. If you're ignorant in, in the sense that you should have known, then that itself is a sin. In other words, if you purposely stuck your fingers in your ears when sister was teaching at Catholic school so you wouldn't be culpable, guess what? You are culpable. All right? But that's the key, my brother. That's not contra... See, the, the Catechism, paragraph 841, which is quoting Lumen Gentium, paragraph 16 in the Dogmatic Constitution of the Church, is not contradicting Jesus Christ. Jesus' Church is simply elucidating what Jesus teaches. Does that make sense, Brad? It does help. Would you then say that like those Muslims who do hear about Christ and reject him, would the catechism teaching not apply to them then? Exactly. But we, we need to add a caveat here. You and I are not the ones that can make that judgment. Only God can. Because just, and this has been a mistake a lot of Christians make. Just because somebody hears, even if it's a great saint, proclaiming the gospel, does not mean they, comp mean they comprehend it, especially with regard to the great mystery of the Trinity, for example, which requires supernatural grace to comprehend anyway. We are not the ones that can make the judgment, ah, that guy heard the gospel, man, he's cooking because he's still Muslim. No, that is in the internal forum where God alone can judge. But in principle, what you're saying is absolutely correct. The Muslim who has heard the gospel and in his heart of hearts said, wow, there's something true here, but uh, no, no, I'm going to reject that because my whole family. That's when all those verses of Scripture you know, unless you take up your cross, if you put father, mother, wife, lands, anything before me, you are not worthy of me. And you will be lost because, you know, we just read on Sunday that great gospel um, from Matthew's gospel, chapter 16, verses 21 through 27, which comes right after the promise of the keys of the kingdom, which I love. Right after that promise, Jesus says, the Son of Man has to go to the cross. And, and Peter says, no way, no way. Didn't you get the memo? We're going to take over the world. And what does Jesus say? Get thee behind me, Satan, because thou savest not the things which are of God, but the things which are of men. And then after he hammers Peter, he goes on to say, unless a man, unless you take up your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. If you love your life more than me, you cannot be my disciple. What does it profit a man? Verse 26 says, if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul. It's when you have knowledge of who Jesus is that all those verses kick in place for you, and you must choose to follow Jesus or you will be lost. Okay, so <clears throat> what you didn't hear uh, in any of that um, was any discussion whatsoever of what the nature of worship is, object of worship is, and the fact that Islam comes after Christianity, that the Quran talks about Jesus, but gives a false Jesus, and hence you combine that with the quasi, not necessarily universalism, but inclusivism of the Second Vatican Council, and you get this confused response that doesn't actually deal with the fact 
that Lumen Gentium says they are worshiping God. So you can worship God. You're worshiping with Catholics, because it's Catholics on here. So the Catholics and the Muslims are worshiping the one true God, even though the Muslim holy book identifies the worship of Jesus as shirk, as the unpardonable sin, as idolatry. This is why you need sola scriptura, <laughs> okay? This, Francis is why you need sola scriptura. Francis on private property, Francis on same-sex unions, Francis on anything is why you need sola scriptura. So, so Francis on uh, atheist fathers having their little kids baptized means that atheist fathers go to heaven. That's why you need sola scriptura. And Tim Staples standing on his head, spinning around, not dealing with the real issue of Section 841 of the Universal Catholic Catechism, Lumen Gentium, Chapter 16, Section 16, Paragraph 16, um, is why you need Sola Scriptura. So what is the real issue? The real issue is the object of worship. Who are we worshiping? And does Islam coming after the clear identification of the Christian faith and denying that worship the same God. And I don't believe we're worshiping the same God. I know we're claiming that. We claim that Yahweh, though that's a term very rarely used amongst Muslims, that Yahweh is the one true God. And that we are worshiping the same God that Abraham worship. But there has been a few thousand years of church history since then. A few thousand years of history since then. Don't call it church history. And so the question has to be asked in our context here now, not back there somewhere. And there has been this revelation that has taken place in the person of Jesus Christ. And so that question can only be asked in our context now in our context now. And so I didn't delve too deeply into it, but I, I got the strong suspicion that Robert Spencer, I, I don't know how Robert Spencer de deals with Section 841, but there was evidently something that Tim Staples said at that point, because it sounded like Staples was basically saying that yes, the Muslim who does not know what Christians believe is worshiping the same God, as Section 841 says, but in ignorance. But if he finds out differently, then he's in trouble. So why do we send missionaries? I mean, if they're worshiping the same God, it sounds like we're being told that they're going to be okay. Unless we send missionaries and they reject the missionaries, then they're not going to be okay. So why do we send the missionaries again? I don't know. It's very confusing. Uh, but that's the problem with, uh, with Roman Catholicism.